guys and welcome to Hudson Premier League. Let's leave the 15th match day of the Premier League. This is Boxing Day with Tom Williams. Let's take a look at all the predictions we can give you. But I also want to know your opinion. So please leave a comment below in the comment section and you will have the chance to win a £10 free bet with Novibet. Besides, if you enjoyed the video, do not forget to click on the like button, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get all the notifications. And now let's go on with the show. We have an exciting boxing day and we are going to analyze every single game with Tom Williams. Hello, Tom. Hey, Eduardo. Christmas is here and the Premier League is taking a red color. Let's see what we have for this amazing weekday. Of course, Boxing Day, the most uh, one of the most important match days in the Premier League, starting with Leicester Man United. What a game. I'm talking about the second and the third right now in the table. The Foxes were able to beat the Spurs, but we all know how they are very weak at home with four defeats so far this season. The last one against Everton and they are facing Man United, the best team on the road. They've won all six games, something that is amazing. And always, Tom, both teams scores. Actually, the last season, the last season they were even able to beat Leicester 0-2. So if we check the odds, I find quite appealing the ones for Man United 2.45. Although we always expect something else from the Foxes at home. Yeah, two teams for whom there's a real contrast between their home form and their away form. Um, obviously, saw Man United put six goals past Leeds at Old Trafford last season, but that's generally not been the story of their campaign. They've struggled a bit at home and they've been absolutely sensational on the road, as you say. Six wins from six uh, in away games this season. Leicester are a curious team and if you, if you look at their average possession stats it shows you how differently they approach games at home and away. They average 57% of possession in home games which is a, a, among the highest figures um, in the Premier League and away, in away games that drops to just up below 48% of possession. So whereas away from home they're happy to, to give up the ball and to play on their counter-attack, for whatever reason they're unable to do that at home. Um, they end up spending more time on the ball, perhaps teams sit off them a bit more. And as you've said, they, they've struggled only three wins from seven in home matches this season. And you look at the teams they've lost to, West Ham, Aston Villa, Fulham and Everton. You know, teams who are having decent seasons, but none of the, you know, none of the, the big guns. So, yeah, I'd be minded to back United here as well. We know what a dangerous team United can be on the counter-attack. Uh, they've scored five goals from counter-attacks this season, which is more than any other Premier League team. And I think United will try to do to Leicester what Leicester did to Tottenham last weekend. Um, that was a match between two counter-attacking teams. This will be six. Um, and I think the fact that you know Manchester United have had so much success away from home this season means that I'd be I'd be minded to back them to win this one as well. Mm -hmm. And they have they are very strong coming back. They have always to overcome uh, an early goal from the other team. It's going to be a very interesting game with two teams uh, eager to counter attack. Then next one we travel to Villa Park, Aston Villa, Crystal Palace. The villains won the derby against West Brom very easily, 0-3 with El Ghazi scoring a brace. So in the last three games, they've won two and draw one. They are back again in form, whereas Crystal Palace, they suffer a humiliant uh, defeat against Liverpool, 0-7. But actually, the last two games away, they drew against West Ham and they beat uh, West Brom, also thrashing them. So here also, I would say we find good odds for Aston Villa's victory, considering their form. They are favourites, odds 2.01 right now on Oxpedia. Yeah, I mean, you always have to be wary with Palace. They do have the potential to spring yeah. a surprise. We saw that in that victory at West Brom. 
Um, I mean, perhaps not such a surprise that they that they would win that game, but to win in that fashion uh, was quite an eye-catching result. Uh, but at the same time, going into this game on the back of that demoralising 7-0 hammering uh, by Liverpool at Selhurst Park last weekend. And Villa, who have um, found a bit of form since that postponed game against Newcastle a few weeks back, they're unbeaten in their three matches since. And notably, they haven't conceded a goal in those three games. Um, winning away at Wolves, drawing at home to Burnley and then, and then winning away at West Brom. Um, and they've kept seven clean sheets this season, which is more than any other team. Um, so my yeah, my sense is that is that Villa are the team to back here. And perhaps if you're looking for a slightly more creative bet, you could back Villa to keep a clean sheet. Uh, you can get odds of 2.9 uh, on Oddspedia on that outcome. And I think given particularly Villa's defensive form of late, I think, I think those are decent odds. Mm -hmm. um... Let's go here for a clean sheet. Then in London, we have in Craven Cottage, Fulham, Southampton. We still see Fulham in the relegation zone. Although they are getting positive results, they drew against Newcastle with 10 players because Anderson was uh, sent off. They have now three draws in a row, only one defeat in the last five games. So everything is quite uh, optimistic or positive, we can say, for Fulham, but they are still down and now they face one of the top teams of the Premier League, Southampton. They lost at home against Man City, but they are doing very well even away from home. Only one defeat this season against Crystal Palace. So Southampton favourite, of course, 2.38, but we just saw how Liverpool, for instance, struggle at Craven Cottage. So be careful for uh, the South England team. Yeah, I mean, as you say, Fulham have become a much more difficult team to beat. Uh, three consecutive draws in their last three outings, only one defeat uh, in their last five matches. And that was a sequence that began with that impressive win away at Leicester. So they are a much more formidable team than they were at the beginning of the season. And um, I think I think teams approach games against Fulham now with a, with a bit more wariness. But having said that, Southampton, as you mentioned, very good away form in particular. And that defeat against Crystal Palace um, came on the opening day of the season. So it's been a while since they lost an away game. Generally this season, they've beaten the teams that you'd expect them to beat. Uh, since that Palace game, at least, they've not lost to any opponent um, who you know you, you wouldn't have thought them capable of beating. So despite Fulham's improvement, I, I, think, I think a Southampton win uh, looks the most likely outcome here. Uh, and you can get odds of 2.33 on a Saints victory on Oddspedia. Yeah, perhaps it's a bit low, I would say, the odds, because uh, Fulham, they are performing well. So be careful, I'd say, if we pick um, Southampton as a winner here with these odds. Um, for sure, we have better odds if we are backing Arsenal in the London Derby, although I don't find a lot of uh, reasons to do so. Now, Arsenal-Chelsea, very, very good game at the Emirates with the Gunners still in really poor form. They lost again against uh, Everton in the last seven games, two draws and five uh, defeats. So I don't know actually when the Gunners are going to sack Arteta with these results. And now they face Chelsea who won uh, against West Ham, very important victory bouncing back after their back-to-back -back defeats with Wolverhampton and Everton. Very, very favourite, the Blues here. Tom, odds only 2.01. Yeah, and you can understand why. I mean, Arsenal's form is, is absolutely terrible. Seven league games without a win. Um, and Mikel Arteta, obviously under huge pressure and keeps coming out with slightly curious quotes in the media. You know, been talking about the percentage chances of of, um, of Arsenal having won the games uh, that they've ended up not winning and sort of trying to claim that they've been hard done by. I, I'm sure that some of those claims, if you look at the, the stats in the XG, are well founded, but they're not things that um, tend to uh, go down all that well with fans or with journalists. It, it does look like he's grasping at straws a little bit and you, you are fearful for his future in that role if things continue. Chelsea, who had a bit of a wobble, um, successive defeats away at Everton and Wolves, but then got back on track uh, at home to West Ham uh, in their most recent game on 
Monday. Not a vintage performance, got an early goal and there was a bit of a wobble in the second half where things looked in the balance and then a couple of late Tammy Abraham goals saw them over the line. But yeah, they, they looked... Um, you know, back to their old selves a little bit, another clean sheet. And we know they've been very successful at, at keeping clean sheets this season. So, yeah, I, I can't see anything here but a Chelsea win, given the, the very contrasting dynamics um, of the two teams. And I think given the fact that Arsenal have looked so toothless this season in front of goal and the fact that Chelsea have looked so solid, uh, I'd be minded perhaps to back Chelsea to win to nil. Uh, and you can get 3.70 on Onspedia on that. Is Arteta's job at risk, actually, if they lose or they, they are still keeping uh, trust on him? I suspect he's probably got a little bit more um, uh, goodwill in the bank at Arsenal. Um, he made such a positive impression last season. Uh, you know, he won the FA Cup, they won the Community Shield, that something seemed to be taking shape. And obviously what's happened this season is that that has just collapsed and, and they do look a very poor team. They don't create chances, um, you know, that they make too many mistakes. Um, so I, I don't think there's limitless patience at Arsenal, but I suspect that they'll give him a little bit more time to try and turn things around just because he made such uh, a strong impression when he first came in last season. And I, I suspect the feeling is that given time, he can, he can turn that around again. But I mean, if they lose again, uh, against Chelsea, which is entirely conceivable, it is it is going to get harder and harder for him to hold on to his job. Mm -hmm. Arteta has a friend in Manchester. His name is Pep Guardiola. He said this week that uh, Arteta is a great assistant. Of course, he couldn't say anything else. And now Guardiola is facing Newcastle. The odds for Newcastle are just crazy in this game. It's 29 for the victory, 10 for the draw, and we just saw how the citizens uh, drew the, their last game at home against uh, West Brom and they are uh, struggling to win. They did it last weekend against Southampton, something complicated, but uh, still they are not thrashing all the teams to see these odds. And Newcastle, they are coming from a draw against uh, Fulham and we have to say that their last trip was a 5-2 defeat with Leeds. So perhaps that explains this uh, really, really, really low odds for Man City. Yeah, I mean, you can understand why City are being back to win this. On paper, this looks like a home win. This is the sort of game that City have won without too much difficulty in recent seasons. Um, but at the same time, this isn't the, the, the City vintage that we saw in those two title winning seasons under Pep Guardiola. They have struggled for goals this season. You know, we saw that, as you say, the last home game drawing 1-1 at home to West Brom. Very disappointing. Um, and, uh, you know, consequently, were they to drop points here, it, it wouldn't be the surprise that it would have been in, in, in previous seasons. Having said that, I do think City have got enough uh, to, to beat Newcastle quite comfortably. Uh, you know, in Newcastle, you got thrashed away at Leeds in the, in the most recent away game and, and have looked very patchy this season. Um, and I think City would have taken a lot of confidence from the way they won at Southampton last weekend. Southampton, are, as we've said you know, previously, are a very solid team who are kind of riding high in the table, who don't drop too many points. Uh, and, and City, albeit only with the one goal, but that was a goal that they, uh, a game that they control reasonably well, I think. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be minded to back City here. And it, it is difficult to find value given that they are so heavily backed but um, yeah I, I think it makes sense to, to back City in this one. Exactly because it's very difficult to find value on Man City if we think it's going to be a tight game kind of we can bet on Newcastle Asian Handicap plus two we have odds 2.60 and we win our bet if Newcastle wins if they draw and if they lose for one goal, we even win our bet. And then if they lose for two goals, we get our money back. So the odds are not bad at all, I would say, for all these things, if Newcastle are able to compete in the Etihad Stadium. A team that is not competing at all is uh, Sheffield United, although they finally got another point, uh, drawing against Brighton and playing even with uh, 10 players, so they ended a run of eight straight defeats, something positive. 
And now they face Everton, a team that uh, bounced back completely. They looked uh, out of the top four, or at least out of the fight for the Champions League spots. Now they beat Arsenal with this header of Jeremina, of Jeremina, and that makes three straight victories for Carletto's men. Um, the odds are almost 2.0, probably enough to back Everton here. Yeah, I think if this game had taken place a few weeks ago, when Everton was struggling, um, you might have fancied Sheffield United to possibly pick a point up, but the fact that Everton have managed to find form again, particularly you look at the calibre of the opposition that they've they've beaten. Okay, everyone's beating Arsenal this season, so perhaps not that impressive. But you know, one nil at home to Chelsea, two nil away against Leicester. You know, teams have been spoken about as potential title contenders, so it, it does feel like Everton have got that mojo back from earlier in the season. I think what's particularly important is the fact that they've tightened up defensively. Only one goal conceded in those three matches, um, and yeah, I mean, poor old Sheffield United, they just can't catch a break. Uh, and uh, sadly, I don't see their luck turning at, uh, at Bramall Lane on Boxing Day. I think, uh, I think you have to back Everton for this one. Yeah, and the odds again are pretty good, so I would say this is a, a clear bet for us. The odds are not good at all for in the next game. We have Leeds Burnley. The odds for the home victory is only 1.76 after the Leeds defeat at Old Trafford 6 2, giving a really poor image and thinking that they are facing Burnley, a team that is also in really good shape they beat Wolverhampton and in the last four games two victories and two draws this is why they are out of the relegation zone even in the last seven games only one defeat against Man City so why don't we think that Burnley can also get a point uh, from Ellen Road yeah completely um you know Burnley have completely turned their season around the last few weeks I mean they're still down in in 16th they're only three points above the relegation places so there's there's still work to be done but the way they're playing you know you you expect them to, to pull even further away from trouble uh, over the next few weeks you know they've they've looked like the Burnley uh, that we've got used to seeing in the last few seasons very solid defensively uh, very hard working and yeah apart from that very one-sided Man City game and Burnley always get thrashed at the Etihad so I don't think there's any uh, you know there's any great shame or or, or any great damage uh, done with that result uh, you know they, they have looked uh, like a pretty formidable team um, and Leeds you know such a yo-yo team their last two fixtures sum it up perfectly they win 5-2 at home to Newcastle and then lose 6-2 at Manchester United in the following game that's the sort of team they are um, one thing you're usually guaranteed with Leeds is goals uh, but uh, I'm going to go against the grain here. I think that Burnley's um, defensive solidity, coupled with the fact that Leeds will be smarting a little bit from that victory at Manchester United, means that I, th I think this will be quite a cagey one. Um, and I can see it being quite low scoring. Uh, and I notice you can get odds of 3.95 on there being under two goals. And I think given the fact that Burnley um, are generally very successful in limiting their uh, opponents' uh, goal chances uh, and have uh, been involved in a lot of very low scoring matches of late. I think that is uh, a decent looking bet, despite the fact that Leeds obviously possess quite a formidable firepower. All right, uh, they are even being very competitive outside Tarf Moor, something that uh, they always uh, struggle to do. So let's go here for under two goals. Um, in the next one, we have West Ham. Brighton, uh, West Ham, they were doing a really good season, although in the last games they are not getting all the points they wanted. One victory in the last uh, four games against Leeds, Leeds, actually. And Brighton, they are getting really, really in trouble. They weren't able to beat Sheffield United, even playing with one player more. Two consecutive draws, five winless games. All this means that they are really close to their relegation zone. So they have to start uh, getting points, but the London Stadium is not an easy one. And you will tell me, Tom, but the odds for West Ham are very good, I would say. Yeah, I suppose the concern with West Ham is that their, their form of late has uh, uh, tailed off a little bit, as you say, only one win uh, in the last four games. But the, the teams that they've been dropping points to, losing at home to Man United, losing away at Chelsea, 
those are games that you'd expect a team like West Ham to lose. I think the only disappointing game there in that sequence was the 1-1 draw at home to Crystal Palace. And, and we know that Palace aren't any pushovers either. Um, and Brighton's form is even worse. Five league games without a win. Uh, and I think, as you say, uh, the inability to beat 10-man uh, Sheffield United will have been particularly um, disappointing, particularly as they were at home. So, yeah, a team in even in, in even more concerning form than, than West Ham. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be backing a West Ham win here. I think it could be quite a tight game. I mean, Brighton generally make their opponents work quite hard. So something like maybe a 2-1 West Ham win, you can get odds of 12 uh, on that on Oddspedia. Uh, and I think that's the sort of outcome we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Probably it's going to be easier for Liverpool to win at home uh, against West Brom. You were talking before about title contenders, probably just right now there, are, there is only one title contender. Um, this is Liverpool. They beat uh, Tottenham in their last game at home. They thrashed and destroyed Crystal Palace on the road. Every single player looks uh, on fire in this stage of the season. And at home they won everything, so we cannot expect anything else with the visit of West Brom with uh, Big Sam in his first game. He lost the derby, but of course he needs some time, I guess, to adjust at least the defence. Um, you have to be creative here, I think, uh, Tom, to find a, a good bet. Yeah, I mean, Liverpool clear favourites, like you say, seven wins from seven uh, home games so far this season. Uh, we expected at some point the, the Sam Allardyce effect will take hold at West Brom, but I think it will take a little bit of time. And I, I had a look at how long it took him to sort things out when he was appointed in similar circumstances by Crystal Palace in uh, December 2016. Uh, which you know he came in again with the team facing the prospect of relegation and, and they ended up surviving relegation quite comfortably but it took him six matches to pick up his first win so you know that's an indication that it, it will probably take a bit of time before things stabilize at West Brom and yeah if if you're trying to turn things around the last place you want to go to at the moment is Anfield so we do need to be creative I, I think you know looking at the not just the the way that, that Liverpool destroyed um, Palace last weekend, but the way that they've won some of their recent home games, I mean, 3-0 against Leicester, 4-0 against Wolves, you know, they've been beating high quality teams quite comfortably, so they shouldn't have too much trouble against West Brom. So maybe looking at uh, the goals market, um, over four goals, you can get odds of 2.76. Uh, and I think the way that Liverpool are playing at the moment and the, the difficulties that West Brom are having at, at keeping teams at bay means that uh, it wouldn't be a, a surprise to see Liverpool to canter to victory here. Yeah, not at all. Even if we check the Asian handicap market, minus 2.5 for Liverpool. We have odds 2.17, so they have to win for a three goal difference to win our bet. And again, the odds are 2.17 for this uh, market. And the last game of the match day is a very, very interesting one. We have uh, Wolverhampton. Tottenham, only one week ago, we were discussing about the title possibilities of Mourinho's Tottenham before visiting Anfield. They lost in the very last minute that game. Then they lost against Leicester City. Now they are in a run of three games without a victory and they are even out of the European zone. Six uh, and six points away also from, from Liverpool. And now they have a tough uh, trip to Wolverhampton. They lost against uh, Burnley, but at home they are dangerous as they showed against Chelsea. So this is the, I mean, the Spurs have to bounce back, but it's not going to be easy at all. Yeah, well, this is two teams on a bit of a downward curve. Um, you know, Wolves have been struggling, uh, particularly since they lost Raul Jimenez. Uh, only one win in the last four. Uh, and we saw that uh, in the game at, at Turf Moor against Burnley on Monday, where I think people perhaps saw Wolves picking something up there, but they were pretty uh, comprehensively beaten, albeit only by uh, a 2-1 scoreline. And, and then Spurs, for whom the wheels appear to, uh, appear to have come off of late, it's starting with that 
that disappointing draw away at Palace and then, you know, losing at Liverpool, perhaps slightly unfortunate. I mean, you know, a game that Liverpool dominated, but Spurs made some really good chances in that game and, and came away with nothing. Uh, and then they were they were pretty um, comfortably beaten against by Leicester in, in their most recent game. So, yeah, worrying signs for both teams. Um, and I think what, what I mean, we, you know how Spurs will play because there is a really only one way under Jose Mourinho, which is keep things tight and, and, and defend deep and, and look for space on, on the break. But Wolves are, are a very canny team. They tend not to leave too much space in behind. So I can see this being a game where Wolves have lots of possession, but perhaps a lot of sterile possession. Uh, we know they've lost their, their figurehead in Raul Jimenez and it will be very difficult for them to replace him. Um, so I, I can see this one meandering to a fairly disappointing draw. Uh, and you can get odds uh, of 3.4 on the draw on Oddspedia. Yeah, if you don't expect many goals also, we have the under two goals market, for instance, uh, with odds 2.25, something that uh, could be also an option. If we see only one goal uh, in Wolverhampton, we, get, uh, we win our bet. Then we have everything for the um, Boxing Day, but your Aka. So my ACA selection for this week is Aston Villa, Manchester City, West Ham and Liverpool. All right. And that gives you odds of 5.48. Of course, Man City and Liverpool's victory give uh, very little odds, but overall we can win 5.48. Then thank you very much, Tom. We will see each other very soon because Premier League is not stopping for Christmas. Thank you. Thanks, Eduardo. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's not going to be easy at all for Jose Mourinho's men to bounce back. Well, this is Tom's opinion, but I also want to listen to yours. So please leave a comment below in the comment section and you will have the chance to win a £10 free bet with Novibet. Just write a comment and you will participate in the draw. And do not forget to click on the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get all the notifications. You can also listen to all our videos in our podcast. And next week we will be back with more odds on Premier League. Merry Christmas!